Alrighty. We are in St. Louis, Missouri, and it is October the 27th, 1958, and the time is supposed to be 7.21 a.m. I'm going to pull you back to 20. So 10.27, 1958, it's 7.21 a.m. And you are a Virgo, a beautiful Virgo, with a lot going on. Oh, my, my. <clears throat> Mercury rules this house, so you have Venus in the house of Mercury. Um, Jupiter rules more fire signs, Sagittarius. So Venus rules fixed Earth. So you got a lot of lot of Earth going on here, and right now Jupiter is in Virgo. So you should be feeling the effects of Jupiter in Virgo right now from your birth chart. Uh, Mercury over here in Libra, almost in the sign of the serpent. Let's get rid of some of. This info that we're not using here. Saturn, you are right up dead in the middle of your Saturn return as we speak. Um, Saturn is sitting in the knee of Ophiuchus now. It is going to go forward and then hit retrograde this year. Um, it will not come out of uh, this area literally until next year we have a saturn sun eclipse on the solstice this coming year so uh, you're in the middle of your saturn return you need to go look that up what that means for you because you're dead in the middle of it you have been for a few months now and you will continue to be for the remainder of this year this is your task and there ain't a whole lot of else on this chart that's going to ramp up over what's going on for you right here. These are major events in people's lives, and that is a big one. Uh, your moon is in Aries, another Aries moon. Of course, it's in C uh, Cestus here, as you can see. I would actually like to... Um, Pull a star from around it. Let me move the moon a day out of the way. Because there's just nothing there. It's going, it's going to be Aries. There's just no way around that. So you have an Aries moon. Pull back to the correct day. Which is a fire sign. So there again, that personality's fiery. And it's all in your head. Uh, Mars. Uh, Mars rules Aries, but it's sitting over here in the Earth sign. Uh, this is the house of Venus. And Venus is sitting over in mutable Earth. Um, so your action is very fixed Earth. It's very down to Earth. Let me move some of this right so we can just get a clear picture here. What all's going on? So you got a lot of Earth going on. Just a lot of it. Jupiter, Sun, Venus, and Mars. And Saturn, who rules Cardinal Earth, is over here. Literally Scorpio, but they're telling us Ophiuchus now and bringing down the 13th sign. He's in the right knee of Ophiuchus, um, which is the part of the body that Saturn rules are the knees. The shins and the knees. Aquarius and Capricorn. And you have nothing up here. Nothing in Sagittarius, Capricorn, Aquarius, Pisces. All that's just uh, nothing there. So, it maturity. A lot of maturity here. Alright, Uranus 
is in Cancer, uh, which is a water sign. Jupiter loves being here. Jupiter loves being in this house. This is just a great place for Jupiter. So your out outer transformation uh, in your life, the things around you, the outer transformation is going to happen here when the planets start to move through this sign, especially when they're aspecting Uranus. You'll notice that transformation is going to be a watery one, uh, literally in the claw of uh, the crab as well. They, you, these used to be two donkeys, uh, but it has been the claw through the Greek Empire into the Greco-Roman Roman. Uh, let's go find your Neptune and see uh, where your water's going on. Oh, wow. We keep getting this. This is really ironic because when you have Neptune, immutable Earth, it's what I call miry clay, and you just dumped a whole hell of a lot of water on a mutable Earth of anyway, and it can make it a damn muddy mess. Or, it can make it very pliable to where it's easily worked with and very creative. And you're lucky because you have Jupiter there to assist you. And Venus. It's going to help you through that. Because you got a lot going on here. Uh, all of it down in the feet of the Virgin too. All of it down there in the feet. Everything shins in below. We've had a lot of these Neptunes show up here, and a lot of this um, in Neptune immutable Earth. And your Pluto is probably going to be in Leo. Yep. So you have a your planet um, subconscious inner transformation. That's what Pluto's about. Major transformation. But it's all subconscious. It's all symbolic. It's all in the mind. And the symbolic part of the mind. And your transformation will occur via the sun. The sun rules this sign. So your change will come as a lion roaring. It will come as bright as the sun. So when your uh, subconscious finally opens up to you, it literally, it's it's explosive when it's here in Leo. And these are Uranus here is your planet of outer transformation and Pluto is your planet of inner transformation. And they're right here next to each other, one in fire and one in water. So it's like the battle of fire and ice between inside and outside. This is the Game of Thrones going on here. And I find that very interesting in itself because those are archetypes that they show us in these in these movies, and that's exactly what this is here. This is what it's describing: the battle between fire and ice, or water and fire, hot and cold. And so your transformation uh, is at odds with each other. And who wins, the subconscious or the conscious mind or the subconscious mind? And your moon, which is your personality, or your conscious mind, is sitting over here in Aries, right below this star that is called it's Sheraton here. But it means the first sign. The first sign. Let's go take a look. No, nope, not that one. Yeah, this one. And... There it is. I've got the star marked, and up here in the upper left-hand corner, the first sign, Sheraton. And, of course, in this one it looks better, because at least your moon's not sitting in the head of the beast. Let's move around and see what it looks like in uh, the Arabic. Yep, yep, yep. The last chart I did had Saturn sitting on this big toe. This chart has Jupiter sitting on this big toe. How ironic can this be? The similarities of the patterns when I start doing these charts. 
uh, okay, Saturn more in. And, and what you got going on here with this Saturn is right after you were born, Saturn was born out of the Milky Way galaxy. That's going to happen at the end of this year with the sun. It's like twins being born out of the vagina of the heavens at the same time on the shortest day of the year, which is uh, interesting in itself. But everything seems to be pretty much bunched up for you. A lot of earth, uh, some fire, uh, fire, 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 fire and earth, fire and earth. A little air over here in Libra with Mercury. So this is your voice. And uh, in the balance, is, this is the Southern Claw. So you take a Southern disposition in your voice of the Southern Claw. And you probably do. Um, Saturn in Scorpio is how you're going to have to read this because we really don't have any information on uh, Ophiuchus, which is the snake charmer. We don't have uh, a history of that. It's just brand new. But uh, the Vatican's been playing this magic pretty powerfully this past year. They used uh, the moon right here where Saturn is to pull down the uh, 2016 uh, Reset to Get Her program. That Reset Together program they did. They played in this, which is Scorpio, which is water. And the only thing you've really got in water is your Uranus. You got fire and water inner and outer transformation, and that's just incredibly uh, crazy. I haven't, I haven't seen it played out like that. And I guess you're going to have to watch the Game of Thrones to see who wins, right? Which is just another play on Valkyries, the Battle of Fire and Ice. Very interesting chart. So you've got a lot of Earth going on, a lot of mutable Earth. And and it being in Virgo and mutable Earth is just change, change, change. Uh, changing a lot in love. Changing a lot in uh, this is God or benevolence. At least it's good. At least you have somebody there with you to help you because the sun rules this Leo over here. Mercury rules Virgo but is in the sign of Libra. And nothing you have is actually in a sign that it belongs in except for maybe Venus being a mutable earth because she rules fixed earth, earth of Taurus. So this is an interesting chart. I've been wondering when the Battle of Fire and Ice was going to show up. They're pushing it so hard on television and just about everything we watch. The two different uh, aspects playing on each other. But everything's bunched up for you. You have nothing in Sagittarius, nothing in Capricorn, nothing in Aquarius, nothing in Pisces. Nothing in Gemini. Everything for you is just, um, really, most of it sitting right here between Cancer and Libra is, is the big players for you. Mercury, Jupiter, Neptune, the Sun, Venus, Pluto, Uranus, even all the way around over here to Saturn. Just all of them right there together. And what you call the declining, everything is, um, uh, the falling, they, they fall away. It reaches its peak during to the summer solstice. It's born at the winter solstice. It reaches peak to the summer solstice, and then it declines. And, of course, Saturn looking to be born here, literally. So, yep, you're, there's your big test right now is your Saturn return. That's where you have to do your homework, and that's what you're dealing with right now. Everything else is on the back burner. Everything. And we just came into Saturn ruling the next 36 years. Um, if you haven't seen the video I made on the celestial cycles of Saturn ruling for the next 36 years, uh, this is going to be very important where you're concerned. Right now. This whole year. This is what it's about for you. So go do your homework on find out what you're Saturn return means to you, and it will be a Saturn return 
and the third deacon of Scorpio is where you're going to get your